Hello, I'm Nicholas. And I'm Christoph. And we're going to talk about collaboration in graphic design. Collaboration is a very tricky thing. The most important thing you have to consider when you want to collaborate is who you are actually collaborating with. <laughs> Your collaborator has to be somebody you trust. It has to be somebody who has a somewhat similar design sensibility. You have to respect them, but also you can't take them all that serious when they kind of like take your project into like this off direction. So it really turns out that the person I work with pretty much on 90% of my projects is. Actually, myself. Uh, I guess I have to elaborate on that a little bit. When it comes to design, I'm really, I'm like a schizophrenic in a way. There's like two souls inhabiting me. The one part is all about drawing. I have this little guy in my head which I developed like in my youth when all I was doing is like doodling and sketching. And um, when, when, when I do jobs like the next one, this is all about the fun of drawing, and this like, little high guy is all happy they can show off his little skills, uh, like in this drawing here for Rolling Stone magazine. Um, but when I went to design school, I studied graphic design, I developed this other slightly bigger little person in my head, which is my inner art director. And so these two kind of like constantly fight when it comes to solving assignments. This is a piece I did for German Men's Health magazine about how men just hate to dance. And so the art director comes up with the idea, and in this case, the art director makes sure that the illustrator doesn't go overboard and really stays very iconic and simple. That's a piece that's a little bit more joyfully drawn. It was for Texas Monthly Magazine. They assigned me to do something on fried chicken, and that was my solution. <laughs> so the illustrator got to have a little bit more fun with that one. Um, I, like sometimes the art director comes up with really weird stuff that the illustrator then has to suffer through. So the idea he was like showing somebody picking their nose viewed from inside the head. <laughs> and so I guess like in this relationship, the illustrator always has a little bit the short end of the stick. In order to solve my uh, 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 assignments, I really try to draw from a wide variety of styles. Early 20th century graphics is definitely one of my favorites. This was a piece on um, uh, the legacy of George W. Bush. And again, I want to keep it fairly simple. <laughs> and I'm really bad at drawing likenesses. So <laughs> Another great inspiration for me is computer graphics. Uh, like pixels, like straight lines, like the coldness of these graphics is somebody I can't get enough of. And for this piece, I felt it, like there couldn't be any humor and cartooniness in the drawings. It had to look all dry. It was about the least visited website ever. So I tried to make something really unappealing. Um, i had done a couple of covers for The New Yorker. And the special thing about The New Yorker is you don't have a headline to support your drawings. The drawing has to do all the work. And I think you need a sense of art direction to really make sure you don't get carried away by the drawing but really make the reader understand what's going on. In 2004, America was extremely politically divided. It still is. So there was this talk about the blue America, which is the liberal America, and the red America, the conservative. So I kind of like split up these flags. Um, I'm absolutely ruthless when it comes to uh, uh, ripping off like styles from like pop culture to art history, like in this case for a style special of the New Yorker. I started with this Pokemon fur coat and then just like added more and more stupid puns. Uh, this was the uh, <laughs> same basic approach uh, about the Olympics in 2004. This is a piece about, uh, for, for Colors magazine and even though I try to pretend like I do everything myself. I really, from the very beginning when I started out in New York, I really had the benefit of working with incredibly smart art directors. And uh, 
uh, design studio in New York, number 17, with their uh, uh, principals, Ebony Oberman and Bonnie Siegler, we're working a lot on this piece together. And even though I, of course, did the drawing, we discussed the editorial context and what the drawing had to achieve within the magazine. And that really contributed to uh, uh, what the piece ended up looking at, uh, uh, looking like. And so art directors are important, but of course, ultimately, it's just like me sitting there desperately in front of my white paper with like my two little people just like fighting the fight in order to solve my assignments. Okay, um, Christoph, I think you've uh, said enough things now. And I'd like to make a few points of my own. Uh, first off, I'd like to say that my main job is as an art director at the New York Times, and I try to maintain a freelance illustration career on the side of that. And I am, in many ways, the opposite of Christoph. Uh, the person I least like to collaborate with is myself. I hate working alone because I find it's so hard, and because it takes so much time, and because the um, results invariably, I find, are very predictable. Um, so ostensibly, though, I am the illustrator who did this drawing um, on the importance of keeping quiet uh, in certain business relations for a business magazine. I'm sure at some point along the way, Christoph um, helped me. Uh, and the same is true of this drawing. Um, I draw millions and millions of sketches before I find the right drawing, so I have to surround myself with a posse of uh, art directors. Uh, authors have ghost writers and designers have ghost art directors, and some of my ghost art directors are um, my father, who's also a cartoonist, and uh, my wife, Louisa, who's a graphic designer, and of course, Christoph, who I share a studio with and sits right behind me. And the other problem with being a graphic designer, uh, being an illustrator all by oneself, is that invariably one gets the same assignments over and over again. Um, so this is yet another illustration on the um, dangers of email. And so I have to try and reinvent myself each time. And I, uh, part of my problem is I'm, I'm, different people know me for different things. I, Sometimes I'm, some people think of me as an illustrator and other people think of me as a graphic designer. So sometimes I have to switch hats. Uh, this was for uh, Süddeutsche Zeitung, a German magazine. Uh, and this was on the, all the different buzzwords for uh, the year 2002. One of the great things about living in New York City is that so many of my friends are in a similarly creative field. And, Invariably, they get projects and they want to involve you. And uh, this was a photographer called Jason Fulford, who lives not too far from me in Brooklyn, uh, shot this very banal photograph of a suburban house upon which I drew this soldier. And uh, it was for the New York Times magazine on how homeland security in many ways could lead to a new police state. And, and what I like about this is that it's very obvious where, where the collaboration is. I mean, the, the division of labor is quite clear. What led me most to, one of the things that led me to illustration uh, is my political point of view, which um, is something that comes out in a lot of my illustration. I, I really feel as if graphic design in many ways is a means to an end. And um, in that sense, when I do these kinds of projects, this was for Greenpeace, I feel as if I'm part of some sort of larger movement. And I don't know, is that collaborative? I don't know. Sometimes it feels that it's more than just the drawing itself that I'm doing. 
and, and then people know me as being the political guy, and I get those kinds of assignments, too. Uh, this was a guide on how to be anti-American, um, which was perfect. I just absolutely love doing this sort of thing. Uh, but I, this, is the, this is the thing I hate about illustration, is that it, it's such a, uh, for me, it's such a solitary and lonely pursuit. And uh, that's why I like collaboration so much. All right, I concede that point, so uh, let's make peace and talk a little bit about actual collaboration. When, as you mentioned, when you work as an illustrator, you really, you're in your own contained little universe, and the most basic, and for me, really the most important kind of collaboration is when somebody just walks over and pierces that little bubble that you're sitting in and just gives you <laughs> this like new perspective that you just couldn't possibly have on your... The other very basic form of collaboration is just, of course, a plain old division of labor. So this was the first job I did for the for a cover of the Times magazine, they had the story on memory, and they called me up, obviously, to do the drawing on a woman's head. If you ever want to try it, it's really a horribly hard thing to do because the head is awfully flat on top, and I don't want to even go there. But so there's like, there's like photographers and assistants and, and caterers and everything, and in the middle there's me like trying to do a drawing and pretend like I know what I'm doing. And that was like really the kind of collaboration I did not enjoy, even though the result everybody seemed to be happy with. I did another photographic uh, uh, series with the Times Magazine. It was their economy issue, and they assigned me to do very traditional business illustration, just that instead of my, using my usual cartoony little funny characters, we would use real people and um, build the whole sets. Um, and so I had a stage designer. We had like uh, uh, costume designers and built in more or less like an airplane hangar size studio. We built these whole, whole, whole uh, illustrations and um, actors would act out uh, uh, my, my ideas. This poor little guy was sitting there at the back end of this uh, pipe for half an hour and we would shout directions in there. And then we photograph it from like a 10 meter wobbly crane, which was somewhat scary. Um, again, there's like no Photoshop in these, so they're like a costume designer actually cut a white tux in half, dyed the one half pink, the other one gray, and it's great because I, it took me like two minutes to quickly draw it, and then somebody else had to work for two days to actually make it happen. <laughs> so there's like how the guy is like being, gets his makeup. And that was like the, the last one of these like two piggy banks contemplating their economic situation. I think she enjoyed that shot a little bit more than he did. <laughs> And here, so they had to run around in these piggy bank suits all day, which I really loved. Um, when I came to New York, I really had this kind of like artist illustration mindset in terms of that I thought it's all, you know, I have to solve everything myself. And Nicholas at the time was the art director of the New York Times op-ed page. And we worked a lot together and I found that he's really one of the few people that I can collaborate with on a creative level, not only like you take do this part, I do this part, where we can sit together and brainstorm because we just have a very similar uh, design sensibility. So there's a, 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 there was an article about uh, kids having too much homework and, uh, 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 and we just found this piece of uh, um, grid paper which essentially did the job. And a lot of these things happened like in bars where Nicholas would come over with a couple of uh, 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 assignments that were due the next day and we just like started taking it away. Yeah, I mean, when I was working as art director at the op-ed page, I, I feel as if all art directors to a certain degree are collaborators. And a, a page like this can only happen when the illustrator or the designer and the art director are both trying to figure out a way to kind of bust out of the confines of, of the grid. Uh, this was a piece uh, that Paula Scher did. Uh, on the great quotes of the year, and she just bracketed the whole damn article in quotes. And now I'd like to show, I'd like to kind of like break down or deconstruct a, a, a another collaborative proce uh, project. Uh, 
The New York Times Magazine has this uh, yearly issue devoted to the great ideas of 2004. And uh, they approached a friend of ours, Brian Ray, to uh, do the illustration. And they had this concept of filling a huge three by four meter blackboard filled with lots of little tiny drawings. And Brian felt that the only way to really make this look as if 100 little scientists came up with 100 little mathematical formula was to get more people involved. So he approached me, and of course, I approached Christoph. And so the way this worked is that I, he, Brian would do some drawings, and then we'd send more drawings to Brian, and then he would add it to the drawings that he had, and then he'd add even more. And then at this point, we had a kind of blueprint or a map of what we wanted this blackboard to look like. And here we are, putting it together. Yeah, I remember we were like standing in front of this big blackness and just like deer caught in the headlight. And like at some point we started drawing these three martini glasses you see there in the middle and looked at them for five minutes that gave us comfort and then we just like improvised all of it. And this is the um, final result. This is the cover. And it's, it's one of these things that we did it in a way just for fun late at night after work. It ended up winning all sorts of awards um, and getting places we couldn't imagine. I think that's one of the real wonderful things about collaboration is that it can lead to unexpected results. I know that if I had done this all by myself, it certainly wouldn't have looked anything like this. Uh, Metropolis Magazine is a magazine devoted to architecture in New York. Uh, they approached us to do renderings of the 10 most significant up-and-coming skyscrapers of the future or of this millennium. Um, so the way we did this is we decided that I would do five buildings, Christoph would do five, and then we kind of laid down the ground rules of how this collaboration would work, that we would only use cyan, magenta, and yellow and that they would overlap in different ways to create the darker colors. And so once we'd established that as a kind of guidelines, then we were free to do our various buildings, and they all kind of had a visually cohesive and unified look. Yeah, I think it's very important when collaborating that you set, like the stricter the rules are, the more coherent the final result is gonna be, and you can then just like let go and have fun within these parameters. And I also sometimes, I don't like to collaborate with illustrators, but I like to collaborate with writers. And I think writers are kind of a logical person to collaborate with um, for designers who are always working with. So this was a piece on genetically modified food, and my friend Jesse Gordon did the writing. And I, I just could not have come up with things like stem cell dip and Viagra peas and <laughs> chocolate chip placebos. For the past, I think, 15 years, I've been publishing, editing, designing my own magazine called No Zone. No Zone, as, as the name of the magazine implies, is kind of a pun on the state of the environment. And it's, uh, it's, it's my most kind of collaborative project, I guess, because what would happen is that each issue had a different theme, was a different shape and format, and I would send letters out to various artists and designers and cartoonists asking them to submit things. And it was really as a way of getting to energize people within the design community on political issues to get them to publish outside the bounds of, of, of mainstream publishing. And it was also, of course, just an, an outlet for my own personal rage and anger at, at so much uh, uh, that's going on. And this is a cover by Henrik Drescher. Uh, and this is a spread from that issue. It was the extremism issue that came out in, um, I think, 97, during the time of the Oklahoma City bombing. And this is a collaboration with our upcoming speaker, Paul Serre, who acted as designer and art director. I was working at the New York Times, and I, there was no way that I could do all the work on this, and so I kind of broke it down more like a traditional magazine and more traditional division of labor and had Paul come in. And once again, inviting other people into the project just made it, it, it grew and, 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 and uh, yielded results that it wouldn't have you know, nor normally come up with. Um, the theme for this issue was the work issue and it has this kind of 
uh, inter-office memo belly band that's wrapped around it, and you peel it off and you just have this dead hallway staring at you. Um, the most recent issue is called Empire, and uh, this issue was actually published by Princeton Architectural Press, which for me was kind of a breakthrough because I wasn't doing it all by myself and trying to get it out all by myself. Um, but I actually had um, a real publisher to help um, get this into stores. This issue was really inspired by a lot of what has happened um, in the past few years. Uh, after September 11th, we were all kind of comatose in a state of shock in New York, and um, then America, President Bush went to war in Afghanistan, and then again into Iraq, and it was clear that I had to come out with yet another issue. And this is from the table of contents, which gives you a sense of, of how many people were involved. I really, I just wrote anybody and, any, and everybody I knew to kind of come up with something. Uh, this is a piece by a cartoonist called Ward Sutton. There was a lot of talk about journalists being embedded with the troops. And this is by a West Coast designer, Michael Mabry. It's called Gluttony. And this is called Introspection. <laughs> And this, again, this is um, a piece by Paul Serre. Paul submitted a bunch, a series of portraits of different cabinet officials uh, in the Bush administration. This is Condoleezza Rice. And there are these highly detailed, beautiful renderings that are just kind of half finished. Um, and again, it's this unexpected thing that you get out when you put this letter out for a call for entries and you don't know what you're going to get back. These are all just kind of gut responses on uh, what's been going on in American foreign policy. And it, the issue opens up with a introduction uh, that Christoph did. Yeah, this was, I basically wrote this editorial and then I illustrated it with these icons that are based on the 50 states uh, uh, in, in the continental US and they always illustrate kind of like the uppercase part of the copy. I'm just gonna read it out loud. Uh, in the United States on the morning of September 11, 2001, Al-Qaeda terrorists flew airplanes into the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. 2,975 innocent people died in the attacks. Misgivings towards U.S. economic power, that's the McDonald's logo you see there, uh, were put aside as people globally showed their heartfelt support. But rather than capturing the people, so that's a portrait of Osama there, uh, rather than capturing the people responsible for the terrorist attacks, Republicans in America are represented by elephants. Uh, so the Republicans turned the new threat into an excuse to increase military spending and kick ass by starting a new war under false pretenses. Democrats are were represented by donkeys. So with the silent approval of the Democrats, a small bunch of arrogant politicians in Washington, such as Dick Cheney, <laughs> tell the world to fuck off. <laughs> with all the projects we've shown you so far, um, the, all the collaborations, there's always one person who's in charge. When I work on these photo projects, there's always the editor who has the final say. When Nicholas does his No Zone magazines, he's the person who has the last call. And I guess when you work under tight deadlines or with a restricted budget, it's crucial to, it's like navigating a ship and you need to have the captain who just avoids chaos. Um, we have this one project where we try to overcome this hierarchy. And the reason why we started this book series 100% is that we're so uh, usually restricted in like working for assignments. Like sometimes we have to work on very dull subjects. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, we have over-inspired editors who try to push us in certain direction, directions. And uh, so we felt that we needed a vehicle to just do all the kind of drawings that we could not or would not have uh, done for uh, commercial clients. That's the first issue, um, a small little silkscreen book on maps and uh, uh, globes and so forth. Um, 
it's a, it's a topic we've both been fascinated with since being little children. So for this book, we both act as illustrators, art directors, editors, and for the first couple of issues, we really published them uh, ourselves. We then take this idea of maps and just try to squeeze it and like uh, milk it until there's really no, my, no more ideas left to be had. It was like my take on <laughs> earthquakes. Uh, the second issue here was uh, on love, and God knows what I was thinking when I came up with the idea of like these two peanuts were attracted to each other. But uh, as you can see, like, with my earlier work, I tried to really make something very accessible, something the reader absolutely understands, and I tried to use these books really as a vehicle to just let go and also try to do something a little bit more poetic and a little bit more open. Um, the first issue we had only done kind of like single page cartoons and in this one like this what I call line tango uh, we also just started working in sequences uh, and like more and more entangled and the, the process how we work is we both do a bunch of let's say like 50 drawings we meet in a bar order a beer look at the drawings then we order another beer and start killing like 80% of all this work because we don't like it for one way or another. Yeah, you kill 80% of my work. <laughs> and <laughs> I kill 5% of yours. Well, uh, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then like the next week, collaboration. We, we meet again and kind of like keep doing that process until we have enough work that we think justifies a book. Um, then once we have like all the drawings together, we try to put them in an order. And what I really appreciate most about these books is that you get these sequences, you get this like subliminal nar narrative that uh, uh, I think really makes out the charm uh, of these publications. And uh, what we try to do here in this love issue is we really, like make funny drawings, but not uh, like be ironic about love, but kind of like do a serious, our serious drawing look at, uh, at love. Yeah, the love issue was all about sincerity, trying to strip away irony. Um, after doing hundreds of maudlin drawings <laughs> on the theme of love, the next issue of 100% was evil. And I think that was also inspired by just the general kind of political climate of the past few years. And evil, of course, is a word that had been toted around by Bush in describing uh, terrorists. But we didn't want to make this a political issue per se. Um, I think the first process of doing these book projects is trying to settle on a theme. And so the first thing that gets killed are all the different ideas we come up with for themes. Um, and it, it takes a while before we can actually settle on something. For the longest time, I was pushing you to do an issue on noses, which I thought was a dreadful idea. Um, I don't know if you can tell here, these are printed, these are black ink drawings, and then there's a yellow varnish that's printed on top that kind of frames the drawings. Um, one really important aspect of this project is that it's not clear who did what. We both, no, not any one drawing is credited to either Christoph or myself. And so what we do is we kind of sacrifice our identities for the greater good of the project itself. It really becomes about the book. <laughs> and part of the fun of this is just like seeing what the other guy will come up with. And then that kind of encourages the other person to come up with something <laughs> that's even more vicious and more cruel. And of course, the ultimate evil in our books is war. War just sucks. You can't, just, you can't get any with anything worse than war. So the, the book uh, kind of culminates in a section in the middle, like a 16-page signature, that is uh, a battle in which I basically send everything I've got against Kristoff. And Kristoff, from the opposite end of the book, is sending all his drawings against me. And so this is a brick armored division. Uh, these are the kitchen appliances. 
course, you can't have a war without the media, so I send media drones. So these are all my drawings attacking Christoph. And then from the other side, Christoph is sending his <laughs> missile brigade. And this is uh, Christoph's secret weapon, which he's going to have to explain because. Yeah, I, I think that Chagall is the most horrible artist in the world. So I figure when I saw these, these uh, kitchen appliances Nicholas was doing, I felt like I have to start really uh, uh, playing dirty tricks. So I built this monster out of Chagall symbols, like these happy goats and like violin playing virgins. And I felt like there's no way he can handle that one. And then, like, uh, uh, in the middle of the book, we have really, like, the true collaboration where I just started drawing one of the soldiers there on the right, and I would send the file to Nicholas, and we really, like, high school style, just, like, chopped each other up and sent a little missile through. And just, like, for weeks, that thing would go back and forth, and we just, like, kept shooting and drawing until the whole page was, was all filled up. And I think... Yeah, I think in many ways that this is like the most rewarding aspect of collaboration, where clearly the sum is just so much greater than the parts, and which is why we love to collaborate together. Cheers. Cheers.